Welcome to the Law of One. I am Robert. I am a humble messenger. It's my pleasure to bring you messages from the Confederation of Planets in service to our one infinite creator. Or else can you hear about the everlasting love and light of our creator? I'd rather not speak about transient things. As most, I wish to speak about the love and the light of our Creator, which is eternal and forever. Okay, enough about what I want to say. Let's get today's session. Happened September 13th, 1979. And I do believe it applies to those who are listening to this message. I am Hatan, and I greet you in the love and in the light of the Infinite Creator. We are sorry for the delay in achieving contact with this instrument, but we are on station elsewhere in your sky and are having to work through a series of what you would call computers in order to relay our thoughts to you. Normally, the one known as Latwi would speak to you, but because of the special group that we have tonight... We wish to speak to you ourselves. This instrument has often wondered why the planetary entity that has most often spoken to her from the inner planes during what you would call seances was named Moses. We would like to bring out some points about the reason for the one known to your peoples as Moses being one of your inner guides upon the earthly plane. It was many, many years ago, several thousand of your years to be exact, or more exact, shall we say, when you and your little charge of courageous pilgrims desiring to help the peoples of this earth stood before the council that governs this solar system and requested permission to incarnate into this solar system in this cycle. Permission was granted. It was not granted to all that applied and to those that won the approval of the council, there still remained mixed feelings for you knew what you must lose in order to enter such a dense and unloving vibration as the earth plane. You have tried through many incarnations to be of service to the people of this planet. It was hoped very much by you before you began this incarnation that this would be the incarnation in which you succeeded in that plan. In other words, my friends, you, like Moses, have been attempting to lead your people through a desert towards a promised land of love and light, which you can see clearly in a distance and know as a reality, but which those around you either doubt or disclaim completely. And now, my friends, you find yourselves moving through the incarnation, giving of yourself to the best of your ability and to the best of your judgment, finding yourself still in the desert. We can only say to you, my friends, that your sacrifice has not been in vain, nor will it ever have been for nothing. Even if you do not lead your people into the promised land, even if, as some rather have rather crudely put it, you cannot save your planet, you have shown by your life and by your works to the best of your ability that love and the light 
that awaits those who praise the truth of the Creator's love. Remember that you are not alone in this great effort to heal a planet and its millions and millions of souls. What you have done prepares the way, at the very least, for another generation of those who seek the promised land. As long as your gaze is steady, as long as you know the reality of the eventual goal. The fact that you cannot yourself bring the planet with you to the completion of that goal should not sorrow you. For you must realize that the free will of each soul is supreme. What you must realize for your own sanity is summed up in your holy works in the parable of Moses and the burning bush. The bush was burned, and yet it was not consumed. And out of the bush a voice addressed the one known as Moses, there in the desert as he stood, foot-weary and dusty and helpless. Take off your shoes, said the voice. For that place whereon you stand is holy ground. You cannot bring people to an understanding. You can only bring yourself to people. And if you have the realization that you are constantly in the holy tabernacle, dwelling in serenity and intimacy with the Creator, which is the spirit of love among men, then you will be able to bring that holiness ever so quietly into the atmosphere about you. We realize that you do not consider yourselves to be saints, that you could not possibly be holy. We realize this. We can see your hearts and that you quake with the sadness of all of your indiscretions, heated words, wrong feelings, actions which you considered indiscreet and actions which you fear may be indiscreet in the future. But we say to you, my friend, we are not speaking here of the human personality, for there is a level beneath the human personality in which true sainthood and true holiness abides. You do not so much need to tame your human personality as to learn to discard it. To understand the shallowness of its emotions. To understand that, as the bedrock of your character, lies that with which you came into the solar system, in that which the council of Saturn passed. Yes, my friends, compared to those who dwell upon this planet from a previous age, you are indeed saints, subconsciously. The longer you spend in meditation, the more you will begin to feel comfortable with the fact, not to be proud, but only to be able to manifest it in your life by feeling the presence and the power of the Creator who is with you, no matter how the emotions of your daily life may turn around you. No matter how distracted you may become by the petty concerns of petty people, yet you have that to fall back on which they may not. And it is that which makes you a shepherd. And it is the lack of that which makes them the sheep. And thus 
your relationship defined. You will recognize other shepherds when you see them, for you will hear in them the world weariness and yet the total sweetness that comes with the subconscious knowledge that this is truly not reality for you, but merely an illusion that you have selected in order to do a job. We are aware that each of those in your little band has become increasingly desirous of bringing, uh, shall we say, to a head, the business of setting the planet aright. We wish, my friends, that we could give you the personal guarantee of success that you would so like to hear. But you have a planet that's moving rapidly and completely into the new vibration. And its people are not. Its people are becoming more and more polarized, are desiring to stand upon ground which is not holy, are desiring to distract themselves from that which may be of depth and meaning to them so that they will not have to think of the consequences of being unholy, unkind, ungenerous, unloving. My friends, you love one another and you truly try to love those with whom you come in contact. We can only ask that you dig a little deeper into your subconscious, into the knowledge with which you came into this vibration so many long years ago. You have the opportunity to remember the sweetness and the simplicity of constant contact with the oneness of all things. You merely doubt uh, from time to time that these things are so because you are lost in the wilderness where there are so few shepherds and so many sheep. And the herding of them is almost intolerable. Therefore we say to you, be of good courage and do not think of goals, but only of the mile which you are walking at this time. We do not know how long the wilderness lasts in terms of time. If it lasts past your lifetime, then you will have been a shepherd along the way. You will not be in at the finish. You will not see the end written across the skies. The movie will not be over for you when you leave this incarnation. This is of no concern to you. Do not be concerned with your accomplishments. Be concerned only with the amount of time that you spend dealing with individuals upon the sturdy and heartfelt basis of the love of the Creator. Be concerned only with the analysis of your own thoughts that you may reject those thoughts which are not helpful to your spiritual growth or to the growth of others. Most of all, allow your intuition to play the part in your life that it deserves. For with daily meditation, your intuition will point you in a direction that you ought to go. There will always be, to those who pray and meditate, 
a path that becomes obvious. It is not always what one would desire consciously, but when it becomes obvious, seize it and embrace it, for it is your next lesson. And by learning these lessons and learning them with love, you and your powerful personalities, well-schooled in love, are raising the planetary consciousness a goodly degree. We ask you to realize that we are very grateful to you. For you have been sent into a world that is hostile, and you do not have visible help. You have a great deal of invisible help, but you must always be strengthening your faith in order to be able to lean on this help as you would upon a help of a friend. Not that we or the Creator Himself could ever tell you what to do, but that when you lean upon the spiritual truth of love, love will live your life and you need only follow the path of love. And uh, do to the best of your abilities those good works that have been laid out for you to do. This may be as humble as a smile in a crowded supermarket, a sweet thought on a winter's day, the noticing of the beauty of nature. Yes, my friends, these are good works. These things improve the planetary consciousness. There are dramatic good works, yes, but they are far and few between. That which love has for you to do will be governed completely by the capacity of the planetary consciousness to absorb the love which you have to give. If you cannot give it to all, you may give it to some. If you cannot give it to some, you may give it to a few. If you cannot give it to men and women, you may always, my friends, give it to children, for they are simple and open and understand love. Your tour of duty, shall we say, is almost over, and we feel that it would not make you unduly proud to say that you have done well. We wish only that your heartaches could be less and that your joy could be more. For this is what you came into the world to share. The joy of living under the highest law, the law of love. We wish you the greatest of peace and strength and confidence in your day-by-day -day attempts to express this love in your life. To show this love and this joy in every smile and laugh, in every refusal to be bitter, in every forgiveness and every forgetting of a wrong. In a way, you are not special, for you are children of God, as are all. It is only that you have more experience, and this gives you responsibility. We hope that this responsibility may weigh lightly upon you, and that you may find grace.